In this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to create custom reports inside of Salesforce. I'll be going over how to create the report, how to set up the filters, how to set up the columns, how to run the report and share the report with your team. Welcome to the channel. My name is Nick. Thank you ever so much for giving this video a watch. Hopefully it will be of value to you. Just before we get into the video, if you need any help at all setting up Salesforce for your business, check out my website below. We would be delighted to help. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Like I just mentioned, in this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to create and run custom reports inside of Salesforce. Now, what we firstly need to do is go to our navigation bar up the top and head over to the reports area. This is where we'll be running and managing all of our reports. On the left-hand side, you'll see a list of different options. We've got a few different folders. I will come onto those later on in this video, but to start with, I wanna create a new report. So in order to do so, we need to go to the top right-hand corner. And as you can see, we've actually got two options here. We've got new report and new report in Salesforce Classic. Now this actually implies Salesforce Lightning, and I strongly recommend recommend you select this option. This is the option I'm gonna be demonstrating in this video, given that Lightning is the future of Salesforce. So go ahead and press new report, and we will be presented with this screen here, okay? This is where we can select the data that we're gonna to use to run our report. As you can see, we've got the different areas or objects inside of Salesforce to choose from. We've got a list of them. So as you can see, accounts and contacts, opportunities we've got customer support reports which is essentially cases leads campaigns activities and the list goes on so in this particular instance in this example video i'm going to be creating a report on my opportunities so if i select the opportunities area you will then see these different options now this may be a little bit confusing let me explain why we've got all of these different options firstly we've got opportunities now this is just plain and simple opportunities and then we can add additional filters and build it out, build our report out. Whereas opportunities with contact roles and with partners, these are essentially coming with predefined filters that have already been added to the report. I recommend you just start from scratch and then add on the filters that you require. The, the filters that you require. However, if you'd like to, you can start with these reports, um, which is essentially just pre-populated with some additional filters. You'll find that if you go to any category on this list, there will be the accounts, and then there will be accounts with partners, account with account team. So there, there is an addition additional option for all of the different categories. But I recommend just starting with opportunities or just starting with accounts or leads, whatever the case may be for you guys. So if we select opportunities, then what we wanna do is just go ahead and press the start report button. We will then be presented with this screen here. Now this may seem very overwhelming. It's actually super simple. It's kind of like a glorified Excel spreadsheet, but let me go ahead and explain how everything works. The first thing you're gonna to want to do is make sure that this has been ticked. The reason is, if it's unticked, you'll have to press a refresh button every time you make changes to your report. However, if it's ticked, the update preview will be automatic, which is just saving you time and prevents any confusion. So once we've got that sorted, let's head over to our filters area. Now, by, by default, the filters are my opportunities and there's always some weird date range that Salesforce pre-populates for us. Let's go ahead and remove that. So if we just select on that particular filter, as you can see, we've got show me, and then we can just change it from my opportunities, my team's opportunities and all opportunities. In this instance, I wanna see all opportunities, but of course this is gonna vary depending on the report that you are looking to create, okay? We then got the close date. We can change the date range to all the different date options that we have available. But if you change the range from the, the range options here, I'm just gonna select all time and just press apply to show me all of my deals. Again, this is gonna vary dependent on the report that you are looking to create. So now we've really brought everything back to basics. This is where we can then go ahead and add our filters. So we can begin to actually generate the report to show us the data that we want to see. So let's, for example, I wanna see all of the opportunities with the lead source that is equal to, and we can change the operator to not equal to. Um, and then we've got our list of options here. So we've got all, advertisement, employee referral, external referral. So let's say I want to see social web um, and maybe, should we say, 
uh, advertisement as well. So all of our digital stuff that we've got going on, I want to see all of the opportunities that have been generated as a result of our digital efforts. So if I then go ahead and press the apply button, this will then populate all of the opportunities that are equal to the filters that we've created. Now we can then begin to add additional filters and go on and on and on. So I could then go to amount, for example, and select amount. And then I want to see all of the opportunities that is equal to and greater than equal, greater or equal to value. And then let's just say 10,000 and then go ahead and press the apply button. So this is then going to show me the lead source that is equal to advertisement, social and web and has a value greater or equal to 10,000. So I could go on and on and on about the whole filters thing, but I'm sure you get the idea. You know what you guys are looking for within your reporting. But what I do want to show you is the filter logic. And this allows us to change the filters from and to or. So as opposed to lead source being uh, advertisement, social and web, and the amount is greater or equal to 10,000, we can change the filter logic. If we use this drop down menu and go to add filter logic here, we can change the and to or. And then what we can do is press the apply button and this will show us all of the opportunities that equal advertisement, social and web or are greater or equal to 10,000. So hopefully that gives you a very basic idea on the whole filter logic options we have when we're generating reports. You can become very extensive, but just practice um, and test what works and what doesn't. Um, if you have any questions, please just drop a comment below with regards to the filter logic. So I'm just gonna remove the filter logic for the time being and keep it on an and basis, as you can see here. Now moving on from the filter stuff. So let's say this is all the filter criteria that I would like for my reporting. I then wanna go ahead and clean up all of these columns. There's loads of data that I don't need. So what we can very easily do is just go to the column that we'd like to get rid of, go to the drop down menu next to it. And you can see here, we've got a few different options. We can sort by ascending, descending, we can group rows by this field. We can show a unique count, we can move it to the left or the right, and we can remove the column, which is exactly what I wanna do. What we can also do is reposition columns just literally by dragging and dropping them, and they'll just update accordingly and move around. So that's super, super simple. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up this particular report. So I'm gonna remove owner role, I don't need that. And then I can start to see what else I need. So let's say I don't need this as well. And then let's get rid of this as well. So now I've cleaned up my report. I've also defined my filter logic, but now I'm thinking, actually, there's some data that I would like to see. So now I've removed all the data I don't wanna see. I need to go ahead and add the data I do want to see. So if we go to the fields button on the left-hand side, far left-hand side, hopefully you guys can see this. This will show you every single field that has any association with opportunities. So you have all of the opportunity fields, as you can see, but we've also got the related objects as well. So we've got accounts, we've got account address stuff, we've got the primary contacts, we've got the contact stuff, absolutely everything. So what I can then do is let's say I want to see the email address for the primary contact of that particular opportunity. I can then literally drag and drop it onto my report. And there we have it. It will now add the contact email. So you can see here we've got the contact email for the primary contact on this report. So you can see how you can then really start to build out the reporting and all of the different options to see the data that you want to see. So now we've added the data we do want to see on the report. Let's let me show you some additional functionality. So let's say if we go to amount and go to drop down menu, you'll see here we've got this summarize option. This allows us to summarize the values by these different options. So we can see the sum, the average, the maximum, the minimum, and the median. So let's say I want to see the average of the um, opportunity values based on the criteria that we defined in the filters. I can then go ahead and press the average button and this will show me the average value for all of the opportunities that match the criteria that we set out so again you can then start seeing additional data again i can do this by probability as well so let's say i want to see the average probability for these deals i can then see that the average value is 34,308 pounds and 33 pence and the average probability percentage of close is 63 percent so we're now starting to get some really interesting data that is all exists inside of our salesforce system we're just pulling it all together Okay, so very, very helpful. Once you are now happy with your report, what we can do is go ahead and press the save button. 
If we press the save button, we then need to give our report a name. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this report example report, just for the sake of the video. We can change the reporting unique name as well. So example, but it always has to be an underscore and then report just for the sake of this video. And then we have a report description if you'd like to add a description about this report just so people are familiar with what it does. And then down the bottom here, we have got this option where we can select the folder that we add this report to. So if you press select folder, this will give you a list of all of the folders available. Now bear in mind, this will have an impact on the sharing functionality of this report. So if I put this report into the private reports folder, no one else on my team is gonna be able to see this report. However, if I put it in public reports, everyone will have access. Okay, so just think about that. If I put it in public reports and just press select folder, that means everyone inside of the system is gonna have access to this particular report that I've just created. Go ahead and then just press the save button. And congratulations, you have now created your new report. What we can then go ahead and do is press the run button and this will then run our report and it will show you all of the data. So it shows the average amount, the total number of records and the average probability of close rate for all of these records. Now do bear in mind, every time a new record that is added to the Salesforce system matches the criteria that we set out in the filters, it will then be added to this particular report. Okay, so then obviously that will change the amount average and the probability percentage average and just allows us to keep on top of all of the information that we would like to keep on top of, dependent on what your reporting needs are. If we then head back to the reports area, you will see we've got our example report in the recents area. But also if we go to public reports, you should then find our example report that we have just created available to then select on. If we click it, it then runs that report for us and shows us the data. So once you've created it and saved it, you can then go back to that report anytime just to see the data that you need to see. Hopefully you're now familiar with how to create reports inside of Salesforce and I will see you in a moment's time. Hopefully you can now create reports inside of Salesforce and get an insight into the data that you have in your system. If you have enjoyed the video or found it at all useful, please consider giving it a like, possibly even subscribing. If you have any further questions at all, feel free to drop a comment below or you could email me as my details are in the description below and I will do my absolute best to answer any questions you do have. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will hopefully see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.